So I'm here to let you know one thing. Change your brain. And we're going to need to. That's the challenge of uh, now. That's the challenge of now, of our world right now. We look at the problems of the world, right? We're worried about health care. Three main causes of costs in health care right now. Cardiovascular, cancer, psychiatric. Here's the good news. Have you heard? We're actually curing cancer. Not bad. More people are surviving cancer. People are living longer. We're curing heart disease. People are living longer now. I know a cardiologist who uh, jokes uh, that uh, his job is to keep people alive long enough for their cancer to kill them. <laughs> uh, we're not getting anywhere with psychiatric illness. Suicide deaths haven't gone anywhere. And it's not just suicide. Neuropsychiatric disorders are the number one cause of disability in this country. Severe mental illness loses up to 20 years of the life on average. <clears throat> and it's not just severe mental illness we're talking about. This is depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, ADHD, PTSD, arguments, uh, emotional health impacts on all of us. Let's all take a deep breath. So I want to go slow in and particularly slow out. Triggers the vagus nerve, sends uh, information up to your brain telling you that you're calm. All right, so how do we get here? Let's back up a little bit. 2,500 years <laughs> to the birth of modern medicine. You're going to go, uh, go to see the guy. Go see the doctor, you're sick, so you go to Hippocrates. So Hippocrates, I I'm not feeling well. Well, I I'm just, uh, I've got this cough and I've got a little bit of fever. Mm-hmm, tell me more of your symptoms. Okay, uh, well, I'm getting night sweats and uh, I've been losing some weight. He says, I have it. Oh, really? It's a disorder. You have a disorder uh, and it's, uh, it's a result of uh, an imbalance of fluids in your body. These four fluids. You have an excessive phlegm. We're going to treat these symptoms. Treat the phlegm. All right. And, he, you know, Hippocrates is, a, is an integrative, alternative kind of guy. So, you know, maybe he'll uh, diet and exercise. Maybe he'll bleed you. Leeches. It's uh, either way. Uh, and so... Now let's jump forward 2,300 years, because that's how long it's going to be until you can find a cure. Uh, through advances in medical technology um, and instrumentation like the microscope, 1884, Joseph Koch uh, better understands the uh, pathophysiology and uses the tools of the time to find the actual root cause of the problem. It's a bacteria. It's tuberculosis. And so now that we know the cause, scientists everywhere can start to rally to figure out how, how, do, we, how do we treat this, right? And shortly thereafter, we develop antibiotics. Um, and now infection is not as much of an issue in our world. Still a problem, but uh, now let's jump forward, right? So now it's 1990. You want to go see a doctor. You want to see the best doctor you have. So it's 1990, it's uh, Dr. Cosby, Bill Cosby, right? <laughs> so, uh, so Dr. Cosby, I'm not feeling well. So, Tell me more. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, Dr. Cosby, I I'm, uh, I'm sad and I'm not sleeping well. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and uh, I I'm not sleeping and I'm not eating well. And uh, I'm, I'm having trouble concentrating. Oh, I got it. Oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah, major depression. Really? Yeah. So Dr. Cosby takes your symptoms, diagnoses this disorder. Okay. Well, well what do we do about it, Dr. Cosby? I mean, can you can we get a blood test or something? We have, you know, microscopes and these tools. And Dr. Cosby is a smart guy, and so he says, well, the brain's kind of like a computer. And... There's these circuits, but if you want to open up under the hood, you, it'd be kind of like taking a picture of a computer. 
uh, you're not going to see anything. That's a bad accent. That's just not good. <laughs> um, so, oh, you're right. But he says, but don't worry. Uh, it's, uh, we actually now understand that it's a chemical imbalance. And there are these four brain chemicals, uh, serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, and GABA. And it's a dysfunction of these brain chemicals. So we're going to treat those symptoms. And Dr. Cosby is also an integrative, alternative kind of guy. So he says, well, a little bit of rest and diet and exercise. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay. These medications can be lifesavers. I, I don't want to. I don't want to downplay that. Fast forward 20 years, we now have the technology. We now have the tools. This is a 7T fMRI scanner uh, where we can begin to delve into the underlying pathophysiology of what's going on. And we can now actually see the structure of what's going on. Those circuits that we couldn't envision before, now we can. And we can drill down even deeper because we realize at the core of all these brain circuits and brain systems is the synapse. Now, there's, there's actually more of these in your brain than there are grains of sand uh, on Earth. And what they do is they build these systems, these brain systems. Um, these mental disorders we're talking about, depression, PTSD, OCD, anxiety, they're not mental disorders. They're brain disorders. What is the brain, right? Well, and you hear the brain's like a computer, right? And in a lot of ways it is. It carries information. There are circuits that get laid down, electrons travel to and fro. Uh, but unlike a computer uh, that runs this particular software, the brain... When it runs software, that software then creates hardware as it goes. The physical structure of your brain changes in results to, as a result of the software it's running, of what it's doing. Uh, and this is a result of what, what's called Hebbian learning. Now, we've known this for a long time in terms of Hebbian learning, uh, since about 1949. But we didn't realize the extent to which that this, this, uh, this plasticity, this neuroplasticity, occurs over time. And so these synapses build circuits. And these circuits are, are complicated, you know, multidimensional software loops that are embedded in structure in your brain. But because we know that these synapses can change, that the software can create hardware, scientists are now using this to develop therapeutics based around that. So researchers at uh, University of California, San Francisco, uh, did a co uh, training program where they trained the distinct brain circuits involved in sort of the worst of brain disorders, schizophrenia. Uh, and over a training protocol, what they find is by training distinct neural systems, uh, they change the function of the brain, the metabolism of the brain, structure of the brain the medial prefrontal cortex here. It's an area involved in understanding where you exist in, in relation to other people in a social fashion. If you can change your brain, let's change our brains. Okay, so this is what your brain looks like. Looking at the circle, we're gonna make some associations here. Look up at the circle. Why don't you do, again, take that deep breath in. Deep breath out, slow out. And I want you to continue that pattern. And while you're doing that, envision that O, that openness. And envision someone that you love. And send love out their way. And feel that warmth or compassion, friendship, uh, radiating out from you to them as you breathe slowly. There you go. So you've just changed your insular cortex. So that's what researchers at University of Madison, Wisconsin are doing in individuals and showing through this repeated uh, trainings like the one that you just did, which is based in compassion-based uh, meditation, that people can change their brains. So 
there's a lot of ways to change brains. Um, and if we can change our brains, um, perhaps we may want to consider putting some intentionality into how that happens. Um, there are people out there who would like to change our brains, not necessarily for compassion, but uh, to turn a profit. A hefty one at that, right? So uh, if you guys are familiar with the internet uh, that it came out of DARPA's funding, the head of DARPA left because he basically got bored and decided that uh, the best behavioral technology, and at the time, is in the gaming industry, the gambling industry. Um, on the other hand, you have some big companies that are using uh, principles of neuroscience to align things like motivation reward systems and our dopamine circuits that, you know, that trigger every time I check my fuel score, right? towards things like activation, getting kids involved in health, um, and selling shoes. <laughs> so this is a whole, um, it's a neuro environment. This is a whole new world. The brains grow as a result of where they are and what they're doing, right? As Kevin Kelly said, that this is, and as Rory pointed out excellently, this is, uh, uh, these are digital natives. This is the new neuro environment. This is, this is 15 years ago. So if you can change a thing uh, and you want to bring some intentionality to it, well, that's design, right? And so if we're looking to change brains uh, in an intentional way, uh, we should probably use some of the principles of design, right? To the most powerful forces of our time, right? Neuroscience and design. So... Um, and specifically, the ability to monitor, the ability to visualize, and the ability to manage. Right? So there's all kinds of ways that we can monitor ourselves. Um, think of the quantified self movement, right? Uh, or you know, something like 60% of all Americans are quantifying some aspect of their lives or their families' lives. Um, and that could happen through self-report, right? Is one way. Um, but asking people, right, filling out forms. But uh, I'm a psychiatrist, and I see a fellow uh, clinician in the audience. Um, uh, child psychiatry, uh, adolescent psychiatry, the number one most critical area of shortage in all of medicine. Surgeon General had to put out a, an article saying, hey, this is a problem. And yet I spend hours a week filling out paperwork about how's your activity level, how did you sleep last night, right? Things that we can get elsewhere. So uh, we're uh, at Emote, we're actually pairing with companies like Vansive uh, to take uh, objective biometrics into the equation, right? So how did I sleep last night? Well, here. There you go. Yeah. So that right there. Try to get, you know, rest up for the talk. <laughs> um, I knew my brain would need it. Shifting gears. Um, so that the ability to monitor is important. Um, how about visualization? Well, once upon a time, there was a child born with a brain defect. He, uh, specifically, the parts of his brain, things like computation, were all weirdly wired around visualization. But he, he turned out OK with it, right? And so the, the uh, abnormalities in Einstein's brain uh, allowed him to distill these highly complex phenomena like the impact of uh, gravitational mass upon the space-time fabric uh, to distort it in such a way, to represent it so that people like me can understand it. Um, so that's why uh, we think it's important to, to merge, these, oops, merge these disciplines of um, neuroscience and design uh, so that we can better create ways uh, to distill these complex phenomena into easy to understand uh, metrics. It's all good. <laughs> My brain can't wait. So for instance, this is a standard model called the circumplex model of affect, where we see here that the, um, the x-axis, 
along the bottom, this is pleasantness. So the right-hand side is happy, right, or, or pleasant, unpleasant on the left, activated up on the top, right? So for instance, the brown zone is when you're on the couch, pina haagen you know, just down for the night, hating life, right, right? I call this the tropical zone, you're chillaxing, everything's calm, right? So low sympathetic arousal, high in sort of uh, dopamine, we think of that. Uh, green zone, red zone, you're late for the TED talk, you're trapped behind some big truck, you're like, Ooh, all ramped up, your amygdala is activated, you're perceiving threat everywhere. <laughs> that guy, that guy, he's trying to cut me off. Okay. But, but that's, that's a complex. The simple way you can think about it is like, okay, like happy, chillaxing, you know, down in the red zone. Okay. But then once we do that, we can take these neuroscience-based methods into ways for people to better easily understand their own mood. So for, here's our, for instance, here's our social coordinator, Jackie, and a couple different ways, including via Twitter. Um, which we'll show here. Here's our automated tweet labeling. And let's check in on Jack Dorsey, uh, the founder of Twitter. Overall, pretty chill guy, right? Down here in the tropical zone. Uh, but what's this pleasant one here? This is yesterday. Uh, happy Valentine's Day, love. OK, so it's pulling from the past week. See how he's doing. Here on the left, New York Times. Here on the right, Fox News. <laughs> As we can see, Fox News is a little bit more activated. Both have some, you know, unpleasantries here. Uh, let's see, what's some unpleasantry? Um, uh, India police hunt for suspects in rape, murder. You know, New York Times also reporting on that side of things. Uh, neighbors killing neighbors in Kenya, right? So this is what the brain of the world is doing at the moment, in a sense. But then we have some in the tropical zone here, what's going on? Okay, art review, impressionism, fashion, and modernity. <laughs> fashion? Okay, so in a sense, Fox News is the amygdala of our culture. Uh, calm, this is us, TEDx Grandview Avenue. Somebody forgot their ticket. Ugh. All right, so you guys are pretty chill, but as, uh, you, know, you know, keep tweeting. We want to bring you, but you're on the right-hand side. Okay, so... Uh, to wrap up, um, you can change your brain. One more time. Looking at the circle, imagining the openness. Deep breathing. Opening up yourself to those and those around you, the world around you. All right. So you've just changed your brain permanently. Just a little bit. You change your brain a bit, you change your world a bit, makes us all in a better place. Thanks. Yeah.